Hi, I'm Matt LeBlanc. I'm the repair manager here at Best Foley USA. For 14 years, I was the boatman for University of Michigan's varsity women's team, as well as running my own repair shop for the last five years. Um, I'm excited to be here in a new role, uh, the repair manager, uh, overseeing repairs of all your boats. This could be a small D-lamb, dent, or puncture to the hull. Anything that's between a centimeter up to two inches is kind of what we're looking to tackle today. Um, the products we're going to be using for this repair We'll have a couple different sanding papers. This is a 150 on a block. We've got some 36 and 100. We need some shears or scissors, our fiberglass cloth, utility knife. It's helpful to have a black magic marker, brushes, tape, our protective equipment, which is going to be a dust mask and gloves, some solvent. We're going to be using acetone. Be careful if you're working on a boat that's a foam core instead of honeycomb core because different solvents can dissolve the foam core of your boat. And then we're going to be using some body filler. Um, if we're doing a small repair like this, we don't necessarily have to fill it with thickened epoxy paste. We can fill the void with just body filler. So this type of repair could be attempted by anybody who is not nervous around a utility knife and with the idea of putting a hole in your boat. If you're squeamish when the boat comes to the dock too fast and you hear a screech or a scraping sound, do not do this. Find somebody else, they'll understand. So what we're looking at, this is going to be a small dent or delamination. A delamination means that the inner skin or outer skin of the boat has delaminated from its core. We're working on a Vespoli Ultralight, which has got three layers of carbon, our Nomex honeycomb, and then three more layers of carbon on the inside. So right now, it's probably gonna be hard for the pickup on this mic. But there's actually a crunching sound from the boat. Oh, that was a good one right there. And that's letting us know that's a D-lamb. But it'd be the same thing if we were fixing a hole through the boat, or a puncture, or just a dent that didn't have the delamination in it. So we're gonna cut into the boat on a very sharp angle. So we're just cutting through the outer skin and not through the inner skin. If I went straight in, I would go right through this skin, through the honeycomb, and through the inner skin. So we're going to be on a nice angle. And you see this white line that's more or less giving me the rough area that we're looking at. We're going to be just inside that a little bit. So we're going to push in through the skin, rock the knife over. And remember, this is unidirectional carbon. It's not real easy to cut. Roll the knife up. And there we have it. There's our honeycomb. Now we're going to check again for any crunching sounds or spots that we see that the skin is loose from the honeycomb. It's a little bit right here, so we're going to take it just a little bit more out. Okay, now it's nice and firm. I'm not seeing any deflection in the halls I'm pushing around it, so it's good and firm. Okay, so our next step. We're going to use our most aggressive sandpaper. This is a 36 grit, but you could easily use 80 grit. Um, that'd be a lot more common for you to have around the boathouse. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the paint away and the primer away for about a centimeter all the way around our repair so that we can have a nice good surface to bond our fiberglass or carbon patch if we're using that back to the skin of the boat. So we're not bonding it to the paint or the primer or any body filler that's already in place in the boat. We're going to make sure we have a sanding block that's bigger than our repair, just so as we're getting the more uh, towards the finished product, we can get a nice beveled edge and shape to the boat. And that's all we got to do for the second step. Since we're in the shop, we have compressed air. We're going to use compressed air to blow out the carbon dust and paint out of our repair. You could easily do this just with or a vacuum cleaner if you're in the shop and don't have access to it. Now we're going to clean the area around our repair with a little bit of our solvent. Once again, we're using acetone, which is basically industrial nail polish. Okay. 
We're doing this to get rid of any contaminants that might be in the repair. This boat was rode in salt water, so you never know what you're going to run into. But as long as it's good and clean, we're going to be able to get a good bond when we put our laminate on it later on. Now we're going to mask off around the area. And the reason we're doing this is for you at the boathouse, this way if you're getting too much resin on when we're going to later step in the repair, the resin will run onto the tape and on your boat and it'll limit how much cleanup you have to do later on. So roughly we have a golf ball of our body filler and to that we're going to add a P of our hardener. Okay. And you can mix it with more hardener which will set up quicker or less but don't go too much less than that otherwise it will never harden on you. Okay. Once again because this is such a small repair we can fill it with body filler and then move on to the next step. You could, of course, do it with thickened epoxy paste, which we'll cover later on. But then you'd have to wait on the dry time of the epoxy, which would be approximately 12 hours. So we're mixing this to get a nice uniform color. We're using a, a lightweight body filler. It has less talc in it. Um, it's more of a premium grade filler. You can do this with Bondo, but the problem with Bondo brand is that they tend to have a lot of talc in it. Talc absorbs water, and we roll in what? Water. So it's not the best thing to put into your repair. We're not too concerned about getting a little bit outside of it because we're gonna sand this down again to shape it a bit before we put our fiberglass patch on. We're trying to make sure we fill all the little voids that were in the honeycomb, and especially any voids that were right next to the edge of the carbon. So we have a nice solid piece to put our patch on. This will cook off at different times depending on how much hardener you added. We're probably going to be about 15 minutes because we're in a very warm shop. If you're in a boathouse during the middle of winter and it's about 40 degrees, it's going to take longer for this to kick off. So if you're there, plan on waiting for 25, 30 minutes. Just make sure when you come back to it, it's not tacky. That's when you know you're ready to move on to the next step. So it's been about 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes. Nice and hard now, nice and firm. It's not sticky or tacky at all. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna sand it this time with our 80 grit on our block. We don't need to use our 36 again at this stage. We're not trying to take any more of the carbon away. We're just going to sand down the body filler so there's nothing left other than what's in the void that we filled. You can see how quickly this is coming off because we put it on nice and smooth, not too thick. And there we have it. That's as far as we need to take it down. We're going to clean the area again with our acetone. Okay. And now our next step is going to be getting our epoxy resin. We use West System in the shop. Um, it's readily available just about everywhere in the world. And it's going to bond to just about anybody's boats that are currently in production. Now we have our fiberglass patch. And to make this easier, what we do is we're going to trace out the area around our repair all the way out to where it's back onto just barely on that paint with a magic marker and then we're going to cut that shape out so that we have less patch the sand. If I was doing this in the shop, we would just put the whole patch on and then once it dries, I would come back with my power sander and sand it all the way. But because we're doing this and showing how to do this at the boathouse, we're going to minimize how much hand sanding we have to do so we're not spending the entire weekend at the boathouse. If you're doing this in a white hall, it's a lot easier to see the outline, but the camera probably can't pick it up, but I can see the outline of the repair through the glass. When in doubt, just make it a little larger. This means you have a little bit more of the sand. Then we're gonna cut it out. I'm gonna go slightly larger than my shape. Okay, now we're going to check our patch. Look at that. You'd think I've done this before. 
syrup of our West System epoxy. We're gonna mix it until we get a nice uniform color. And then go for about another 30 seconds. This is a small repair. We're gonna use a one inch, just disposable, cheap brush. We're gonna coat the entire repair area where the patch is gonna go and just a little bit outside of it with our resin. Now we're gonna put a patch on. And with a fairly dry brush right now, we're just gonna kinda of stimple it in place. We're pushing that resin that's behind the patch through the glass cloth. It would be the same process if we're using carbon fiber or Kevlar. For small patches, we're using a 10 ounce fiberglass. That's plenty. If you're using a thinner, like six ounce glass, you'd wanna use two layers. Looking for any drips, don't see any. And that's all we have to do. Now this would have to cure, depending on the time and temperature and humidity, for 12 hours or so. Because we have access to it, we're gonna use a layer of resin control fabric to give us an even smoother finish to our fiberglass. This isn't a required step, but if you have access to it, why wouldn't you use it? So, very similar to the fiberglass itself, we're just gonna put it right over the boat. We're just gonna stimple it in with a little bit more resin. And this will also eliminate any drips from the resin as it dries. If you ever get a little drip of resin anywhere you don't want it, like I just did over on this side, we're just gonna take a piece of our fiberglass cloth, blot it up. It'll pick it up better than any paper towel. Okay, so it's the next day. Our repair is hardened overnight. Now you can, we've really, look at our repair here. We've got our resin just coming out just a little bit past the part where we uh, took the paint off and our glass is all the way right out to that edge. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand it down so we're gonna alleviate that or eliminate that glass that's right around the outside of the repair, leaving just the patch over the bare carbon. To do this, we're gonna use either our 80 or 100 grit. Um, I've got a little bit of 36 grit. I'm gonna try it with that first, but it's probably gonna be a little bit too much. So if you're doing this for the first time, go with the higher grit, just so you don't take away too much. Okay, that's about it for this step. This spot right here we see, that's low, that's fine. We're good all the way around. We're gonna clean our boat again, and then we're gonna add another layer of filler, and this is gonna be to help start smoothing out the whole repair. So we're gonna clean up our repair now, and get it ready for our first finish coat of body filler. We're taking away and shaping the entire repair. Now we're gonna use our body filler again. And this time we're gonna cover up the entire repair and the areas around it, because we're starting to shape it. So if a repair is like the width of the spatula, we're gonna go that on either side and around it to help blend in and fair in this repair. So our body filler has hardened. It's been about 20 minutes. Now we're gonna sand this down and shape the hull so we get ready for our final steps of priming and painting. Um, we're gonna start off again with a little bit of our 80 and then we're gonna be transitioning to our 150, the 200 grit to get nice small light scratches that would be filled in with our primer later on. Okay. Now this step, once we get to this stage, we wanna make sure that we're following the contour of the hull. So we're gonna keep our block in line with the long run of the hull, okay? Switch over to our finer grit, our 150. And every time we switch to a different grit, it's gonna leave smaller and smaller and smaller scratches to the point we get where the primer will fill in the scratches. There you have it. Next we would clean it up, 
we'd spray with our primer. If you're doing this in the boathouse and you don't have access to a sprayer, you can just use a rattle can of primer like Krylon, get a couple of good coats on it, sand it, it's ready for your finished paint. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll continue this series with more updates soon. Here we have our five millimeter Nomex, and this is a three millimeter Nomex. See how thick our hull is? Some of our competition actually builds their entire hull out of this thinner Nomex, which can cause problems because it's less thickness, so you don't get as much rigidity of the hull, and it's much easier to crack. So if you hit something, you can get a long crack running through the hull much easier than a thicker hull. Um, I haven't seen too many boat builders out there that use this. Um, I've been doing this for 20 years. And last time I tried the count, I got up to 26 different brands of boats I've pulled apart and worked on over the years. So there's probably a few more out there, but not too many.